Another tool to help us monitor SQL performance is the SQL Activity Monitor. This is built into your SQL Server Management Studio. So you can access it by right clicking on your instance name and choosing Activity Monitor. Now the monitor is broken up into six sections, overview processes, resource weights, data file, recent expensive queries, and active expensive queries. So your overview is going to show you your percent of processor time, your number of waiting tasks. Now waiting task in and of itself isn't bad. It's only bad if it creates a problem because people are now waiting too long for things to happen. Database input and output in megabytes per second and batch requests per second. Now these by default are updated every 10 seconds. You can right click and adjust the e refresh interval if you want to. The Now obviously the faster that refresh interval the more immediate your information is but the more strain it's putting on the system as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. So this is just a real quick overview of the server itself. If we want to go into a little more detail we come into the rest of these section. So the first one we'll look at here is processes. Now you'll notice all of these little headers, you really can't see them very well, but you can come over and double click on the header border to expand it, or you can click and drag to either expand and contract as well. Either way will work. So first column here we want to look at is the session ID. Now this session ID is unique to every connection to the server. And so that can come in to play a little bit later on. It's not really helpful for us in determining who's doing what. But we will see it over here when we look at some weights. If we can to find out who's doing what, then we'd want to expand this right here, this login name, and this will show you who we're actually logged in as for each session. So if you have a user, you can look and see what their process ID is by relating the or the session ID by relating the session ID with their username. And then this will show us which database they're in. Now the other thing I want you to see here is with this little uh, checkbox, you can click on this and you can, um, it's like an Excel filter. So you can filter certain things in or out. So I can say I want to look at only the administrator ones or pick any other user. or let me go back and view all of them. So database, this is the task, this is the current command uh, that's running. Now it's the type of command, it's not the exact command. So this right here, this session is currently running a select command. This will show you the application name. Now Microsoft Applications will always include the application name. As you can see here, we're running a select command from the SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, not all third-party applications will display the name, so that's just something to be aware of. The time waiting, if there is a wait, is displayed right here. It's shown in milliseconds. This right here shows you the current wait type. So what are we waiting for? This is the resource that this task is waiting for. So it could be a particular record, it could be a particular table, it could be whatever. So this is what it's waiting for. And this one right here, let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. This is blocked by, and this is going to be the session ID, and that's where we come back over here. So if I have a task that is waiting, and it's blocked by session 68, Again, I can come over to find session 68 and see what user is doing it, what command they're running, or what command type they're running, so on and so forth, and get an idea of what's blocking it. Now, this next one is interesting. This is, let me expand this. This is the head blocker, and this is going to be either a 1 or a 0, or a 1 or a blank. Now, a 1 indicates that it is the head of the blocking chain. So let's say I have a process that's running that's blocking a second process that's blocking a third process. If I'm looking at that third process, user calls up and say, hey, I'm trying to run this query. It's not running. I can come in here. I can look at this. I can find their login. I can find their session. I can see what they're being blocked by, which session they're being blocked by. I can find that session and then see if that is the head blocker or not. So if I have process one is blocking process two, which is blocking process three, and I look for process three, 
and find that it's being blocked by process 2. Process 2 won't indicate that it's the head blocker because it in turn is being blocked by process 1. So one of the things you can do is find that head blocker and then you can kill that process. Now you want to be careful and investigate it before you kill that process. Because if you kill the process, which you do by right clicking, kill process, if you kill that process and it's a mission critical process, you just created a problem. So you can go to the details of that process, find the actual code that's being ran, determine whether this is a mission critical process and do we just need to let it run and say, hey, it might take a minute, this is the process that's running, we've got to let it go, or determine if it's actually hung or it's not critical and it's okay if we kill the process and let the other ones work. Then we have the current amount of memory being used by the system, the host machine, that's basically the computer that this system is, uh, we're, um, there that this connection is from, and then the name of the resource governor. Okay, so that's, this is a great tool for finding if things are hung up and why, and what they might be hung up by. Now, the next session, resource weights, this is kind of a summary of things that have caused weights or blocks. So we have weights in different categories, and then for each category, we kind of accumulate some statistics. How much wait time in milliseconds was caused by this particular category? How much recently? Uh, what was the average wait count, and what's the cumulative wait, or wait time? The uh, wait time, recent wait time, is probably a little more relevant. You may have some really large uh, cumulative wait times, but they might have come from a while back and might not be a major issue anymore. So you'll want to pay attention to the current ones. And what you're looking for here is you know, network I.O. Am I seeing that network I.O.? Just an example. This is not the only one you'd look at. But as an example, let's say you're seeing a lot of recent wait times caused by the network I.O. Well, that gives you an idea that your system is being slowed down by waiting for access to the network or memory or locks or whatever. So this is a quick overview way of looking to see what might be slowing down your system. The data file I.O. obviously is data input and output. So this will populate here in a second. There we go. We'll see the database, the file name, the megabytes per second read, written, and the response time. So I'm going to filter this down because I just want to look at my user database which would be the AdventureWorks 2019. I don't want the other ones. And so here I'll see my files and I'll see my current uh, read uh, time or megabytes per second uh, read, megabytes per second written. And this gives me an idea of how much traffic I have coming in and out of this database. Now the next two are specific to queries. The recent expensive queries shows you the query and how many executions per minute and the C, uh, rate of CPU usage, the rate of physical reads for this query, logical writes, logical reads, uh, average duration of all completed executions, the number of duplicate plans found in the cache, and then which database it was related to. <clears throat> so this gives you an idea of queries that might be that were recently ran that might have used up a lot of time or a lot of resources. Now, if you want to explore that query, you can right click and show edit query text, and this will actually take you to that query and show you that query. So if you have a query that's showing up as, hey, this has been an expensive query, maybe I want to take a look at that and just see if I can do something to simplify that and make it a little bit cleaner. Poorly written queries can really impact system performance. Now you can also view the execution plan of the query and you can see the execution plan and where all of the cost was and get all of the statistics from the query execution. So your active expensive queries is the same thing, except it gives you a few more columns that you can look at, like amount of memory used, um, you can see them over here, the row counts, the uh, allocated memory. So you can see a few other queries here, but this is going to be things that are currently active or were active within the last 30 seconds.
So if you're having an issue right now, this active expensive queries can sometimes identify for you without having to go through the recent expensive queries. The active expensive queries can give you what's going on on the system right now. And that can help uh, diagnose, troubleshoot some of your issues. So there is your quick overview to the SQL activity monitor. It opens up in a tab just like anything else. So when you're done troubleshooting, you probably don't want to leave this up all the time because you don't want it using system resources unless you're trying to actively track something. But it can be useful to open it up and watch processes a little bit and kind of establish a baseline. But if you're not actively using it, go ahead and shut it down and free up those system resources for serving the data.